Hey guys, Matt Lemke here with Through Gamer Goggles. We're at Gen Con, the Cubicle 7 booth. Uh, it's Gen Con 51, that's 2018. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Can you tell what we're going to talk about? You, we're not going to, we're actually going to talk about Lord of the Rings. No, no. I'm in with Graham, and he's he's the lead lead designer or designer altogether. Um, let's say I'm a contributing writer. It's a huge team. Uh, I haven't had much to do with the rule book, but uh, I'm working on a lot of adventures. And uh, those who know my name will know I've been involved with Warhammer Fantasy roleplay since the very start. Yeah, I, I recognize the name. I just can't put your name on anything. So, what are some of the things you've done? Well. Um, let me see. Uh, my first job out of college, I was hired by Games Workshop to help develop the original Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. And I stayed there for four years. Uh, and I've got had a hand in almost everything ever published for first edition. And then I uh, wrote a couple of things for second edition, a couple of things for third. And now I'm back here with Cubicle 7, uh, making sure that fourth edition is uh, as, as shiny and uh, lovable to fans of every previous edition as it possibly can be and they've done a fantastic job with the rule book I can say that because I didn't work on it directly myself uh, it is a wonderful wonderful thing and uh, the closest I've ever seen to what we had in mind back in the 80s in Games Workshop when we first started the game they make pretty books that's for sure they, they, they definitely do so okay so how I mean Every one of the games they make is different. Oh, so yeah. how is how different is the Fantasy 4th Edition going to be from playing like Fantasy or Sigmar or whatever else they come out with in the near future? Right, well, um, clearly it's based on Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy property, uh, which uh, the original Old World version, uh, which has been superseded by Age of Sigmar, uh, and by contrast with Age of Sigmar, it's a uh, very dark, very gritty, uh, low-powered, low-fantasy, uh, leavened with an enormous amount of uh, slapstick and silly humor. Uh, so it's, it's sort of uh, the Witcher meets Monty Python and the Holy Grail, or uh, Jabberwocky, or any of those. When we set out to make it in the 80s, we poured all our frustrations at Dungeons & Dragons into making a, a game that we wanted to play, where uh, the moral choices weren't too simple, and uh, the heroes weren't too heroic, and uh, they still had to worry about everyday problems, and uh, you know, accidents happened, and they were usually quite amusing and involved mud or smellier substances. And, uh, so it was a kind of a, a post-punk British take on fantasy. Okay. Well, I kind of get that reference. Uh, so, what uh, is it? A D20 system, or is it true to D6s? It's, it's a percentile system. Okay. Um, the third edition. Uh, had a, a dice pool system with specialized dice with uh, symbols on them uh, and some people liked it and some people really didn't like it and uh, we've gone back to a percentile system. We've tried to create the best features or to keep the best features of the first two editions which is to say the setting of first edition is ever popular, it's the, uh, the one everybody likes most. And the mechanics of second edition are far superior and smoother. And we've advanced both uh, on top of uh, what they originally were. And uh, I have to say it's the, the best edition yet. I am so pleased with it, I can hardly tell you. Okay, so what have you done to advance the setting? Um, to uh, flesh it out and also uh, to take into account there have been a number of changes in the Warhammer Fantasy lore uh, over the years from Games Workshop. A number of inconsistencies have arisen, and I've taken on the challenge of um, smoothing all of those out, um, finding ways where actually it's possible for both things to be true, and in, but not in a cheesy way or a compromising way, but in a, in a way that will make people uh, go, huh. 
and actually laugh or be satisfied rather than, uh, you know, saying, oh, well, he's just pandering to the, uh, the latest law because it's a Games Workshop license. And Games Workshop have been fantastically understanding about that process. I can't praise them highly enough. Um, they've provided amazing and valuable and sensible feedback and supported all our efforts uh, amazingly well. I'm so happy to be working with them too. Okay, so with the second, you said the second edition rules were expanded upon. What did you use a rolling pin to knock down to, to smooth it out? Um, well, uh, I'm gonna start off with a couple of teasers um, because they haven't hit the rule book yet, but uh, People who've been with uh, Woofrup for a while will know uh, the word Britonia will make them twitch a little bit. Is it Arthurian? Is it dark and decadent? Uh, the answer is yes. Both are true simultaneously. I know how that is. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait to find out, but I think you'll be happy. Uh, similarly, Emperor Karl Franz. Is he a, a feeble and uh, ineffectual, sick old man? Is he a mighty griffin riding warrior? The answer again is yes. And you may not believe it's possible, but the answer is yes. Both are true. Uh, you'll see. And I think you'll be happy with the way I figured it out. Okay, so I guess this, this kind of leads into like classes for characters. Sure. What can we expect? Like I haven't, mm -hmm. I played third edition a little bit, but then I saw the fancy dice and I kind of didn't follow through with it. I don't remember that much of it. So like, are there going to be your traditional fighters, sorcerer, wizard kind of things? Yeah. Um, one thing Woodruff has always been known for is the wide range of careers it offers. Uh, this is certainly true of fourth edition. Um, the number of classes has been expanded. We've added uh, burghers and courtiers and I forget maybe a couple of other classes. Still uh, a large number of careers within each class. The big change is that every class now has four levels. Not just spellcasters, but every class. Sometimes this is a logical progression, so slayers are a single career with four levels. Uh, uh, giant slayer, dragon slayer, sorry, troll slayer, giant slayer, dragon slayer, demon slayer. That makes sense, they were separate careers before, now it's four levels of one career. And sometimes a career has been expanded, such as the ever popular rat catcher now has four levels and you can become quite good at catching rats and indeed fighting Skaven. And your dog can become larger and more vicious with every step. And uh, so that's one of the big changes. Uh, still a large number of careers, but you're not forced to change. You won't top out your advanced scheme so quickly as you, you did in first or second editions and be forced to change. You can stick around and climb a particular ladder as long as you want. Uh, but you still have the freedom to change careers if that's your preference. And are all of the races available or are some of them limited in the main book? In the main book we have um, High Elves, which is new, Wood Elves, Dwarves, Halflings and Humans. Now in the rule book, humans are Reichlanders. This is deliberate. Doesn't mean that Reichlanders are the only humans in the world, and indeed in the future uh, we will see the option for creating Middenlander characters, Middenlander human characters, and so on organically we'll build out as uh, the campaign progresses. Uh, and that leads me to uh, the thing I'm happiest about, the Enemy Within campaign. Now this was a very famous campaign, people liked it a lot for first edition, and uh, Cubicle 7 has given me the fantastic opportunity to do The Enemy Within, The Director's Cut. And that is going to be the campaign that Jim Bambra, Phil Gallagher and I initially intended to create back in 1986, uh, before various uh, realities and uh, problems set in. So it's going to be the campaign that existed in our imaginations uh, which makes it a little different in places from the campaign that was finally published for first edition. Um, and uh, that's going to be five volumes, and uh, I'm having the time of my life working on it, making everything the way I always wanted it to be, the way that we all always wanted it to be. And 
and I think everybody's going to be very happy with the result. And don't worry if you have players or if you have played the uh, first edition campaign a lot. Um, first, we've incorporated 30 years of player feedback into the, uh, the design of the director's cut. And second, I've made sure that it's, there are things in there that will make it fresh and new and challenging and exciting, no matter how many times you've played through the original campaign. And GMs, I've brought stuff for you so that if you're faced with a smart Alec player who remembers the, uh, the first edition campaign and tries to use that knowledge, I'm giving you plenty of options to punish and humiliate players that try to do that. So I can see the uh, fantasy rule book over there Yep. in pre-printed format. That, that's loose leaf. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We have... Uh, we hope to have it for the show, but we, we made a, a command decision that uh, we'd rather have it right than have it here and then have to live with a, a flawed rule book for five years. So, right now, uh, currently available is a pre-order package which uh, gives you three things. The, the PDF that's on the table there is almost complete. It lacks an index, there are a few typos that are being hunted down, but it's almost complete. Pre-order and that will be yours very, very quickly within a few days. Now, in a week and a half from now, and we're in the uh, Saturday of Gen Con right now, in about a week and a half, the final PDF will come your way at no extra charge. Uh, and then in about mid to, to late September, we're hoping for mid, uh, the hardback will be released. And that's what you're actually paying for. And the, uh, the PDFs are free. They're included in the price. So that's the pre-order deal, $60 here at the show, and uh, I think also via Cubicle 7's website and uh, your favorite games e-tailers. Roughly, uh, how many pages is the rulebook? It's 300 and change. It's surprisingly close in page count to the first edition rulebook. All right, and what is your favorite mechanic of the game system? Uh, I have to say it's a, a combat mechanic. Um, those who remember first edition will remember a rule whereby if you won a round of combat, you had a 10% uh, bonus going into the next round, showing that you had an advantage and your opponent was somewhat on the back foot. This mechanic has been expanded in fourth edition so that as long as you keep winning, those bonuses keep stacking. So if you can keep keep your opponent down, keep him on the back foot, keep him on the ropes, his situation gets more and more dire. But one failed roll will blow your entire streak and then you're back to evens again and he can come back at you or indeed you can come back at him if the uh, situations were reversed. And I love this because instead of just standing there chipping away at each other's hit points, you actually have a dramatic representation of the uh, ebb and flow of battle. And I find that very satisfying. It sounds like that's pretty cool. Uh, so is there anything else you want to add? Um, just that I'm very, very excited at this opportunity. Uh, both Games Workshop and Curicle 7 have been uh, absolutely great to me. Uh, I'm looking forward to the enemy within. I hope you are too. And uh, keep an eye on the Cubicle 7 website. They are very, very good about keeping the blog updated, so uh, you won't miss a thing. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And See you next thank year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for 30 years of support and making this edition possible by refusing to allow the game to die. That's the way to go. Hi, guys. Meet the Nibbles, who's going to go down. <laughs> she just did, decided not to go down my back, so we'll do this for her so she's comfy. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please hit the like button. Uh, and, and share it if you you know know somebody who might be interested and of course there's always Twitter and the Facebook thingy and soon I have a newsletter coming that'll be down there or in the link below and my kitty cat loves that idea uh, so anyway uh, there was one more thing there was one more thing oh yeah subscribe be a part of my community our community let's make it grow together see you guys at a con somewhere or a local store or if I'm driving through the country and maybe a game club. I don't know. You're not going to go knock down my camera. Bye, guys.